This is CC Cycle 2, Week 5 Science. This is experiment number 16 in Van Cleve's book, In and Out. This experiment is awesome. Your students are going to love it every bit as much uh, as you do. This experiment involves a uh, setup with four things, and it does involve some pre-setup. It also involves a little bit of practice uh, in order to do it safely. So we have a masking tape, we have a thimble, and we have a spoon, metal spoon. And then what's maybe a little harder to see on the video is we also have fishing line. So I have attached the spoon to the masking tape and I have threaded the fishing line through the thimble right? so, the, so that they are uh, attached. In order to do that safely, I tied a couple of knots uh, around of the fishing line around the spoon. I tie it um, in the direction that, uh, so that it's lined up with the, with the sort of the longitudinal direction of the spoon. I tied a couple of knots and then I also wrapped it with masking tape or, or scotch tape just in order to keep it uh, keep it firm. So you can pull on it, it's not going anywhere. That'll be important in just a moment as you'll see. Then onto the masking tape, I just tied two knots. Um, it, it, it's sufficient to hold it, okay? So you want to start your, your um, experiment, your demonstration off by explaining the connection. So explain the setup to the students and show them how the masking tape and the spoon are connected by the fishing line through the, through the thimble. And then start with it just like this. So that the spoon is free hanging, I'm holding the thimble with my right hand and I'm supporting the mass of the masking tape uh, with my left hand. And now ask the students, which one has more mass, the spoon or the masking tape? The masking tape has more mass, that's right. Um, some of the students may say that it is heavier or that it weighs more. Those are both correct answers, uh, but we, we, we as budding scientists want to remember that it is the mass of the masking tape and the mass of the spoon that really is what's causing the effects. The weight is simply the force of gravity of the Earth's surface pulling on the masking tape and on the spoon. That's why if we take the same object, say the masking tape for example, it's the same object, but if I take it here, it has one weight. If I take it up to the moon, it has a much less weight. The reason for that is that the gravitational pull of the Earth is much stronger than the gravitational pull of the moon. Right? But it's the same object. It has the same mass. It hasn't changed. Okay, so now I start here. So I'm holding my thimble again. I'm supporting the masking tape. And now I ask the students, what happens if I stop supporting the masking tape? What if I let go? What if I make a change to the system? It's effectively at rest, but now I'm going to alter the system. So, so let's watch. Right? If I stop supporting the weight of the masking tape, the mass of the masking tape, then my spoon moves because they're connected by the fishing line. They're, um, they're connected. So uh, this is a good illustration of the principle of inertia. Right? Our good old friend, inertia. Inertia says that any object that is at rest will remain at rest unless an outside force acts upon it. In the same way, any object that's in motion will remain in motion unless an outside force acts upon it. So the spoon is effectively at rest and the masking tape is effectively at rest. But as soon as I change the system, as soon as I remove the, the, the force of my hand supporting the masking tape, now the gravity, uh, the force of gravity pulling on the masking tape is able to act freely and it moves. And it moves not only the masking tape, but the spoon that's attached to it as well. Right? One more time. Okay? Very cool. So what happens though, now we get a little bit more to the heart of the experiment. What happens if I give, that's one force acting. What happens if I take our system and I give the spoon a different force, a separate force? So the gravity of the earth is pulling on the spoon. The, the mass and the weight of the masking tape is pulling on the spoon. But what happens if I take the spoon and I start to spin it? What if I rotate it? What if I give it forward uh, velocity? What if I give it some forward momentum like this, okay? So I'm spinning the spoon. And this is why you have to practice and why you have to test those knots. You don't want any spoons flying around. Uh, I think this experiment can be safely done by the older kids, but uh, I think the ABC Darians will likely put someone's eyes out, maybe their own. So I, I'm spinning the spoon and now I'm gonna change very slightly what I'm doing. I'm gonna continue to spin it, but I'm gonna spin it now only by holding on to the thimble. Only holding on to the thimble. And now I'm gonna ask the same question. What happens if I stop supporting the masking tape? What happens if I let go? Let's watch. If I let go, it doesn't fall. 
I'm now balancing the two forces, right? So we have the weight of the masking tape, the force of gravity pulling on its mass that's pulling on the spoon, and the spoon is also, ha also has its forward velocity. And the two are balanced so that it is staying constant. If I lower the velocity of the spoon, watch the masking tape. I can get it to slide and drop down. And if I speed it up, get the masking tape to come back up. If we go faster and faster and faster like that. Remember, science is like magic for smart kids. <laughs> and so we have this wonderful illustration, this wonderful demonstration of how multiple forces are acting on the spoon. This is exactly what's happening in our solar system, right? So we have the sun in the center of our solar system, this enormous object with this incredible mass and this incredible gravitational pull. And then you have planets that are orbiting it. And so the planets are being attracted uh, to the sun by its gravitational pull, but they are in forward motion, they have forward velocity. And so those two things balance to give the planets a stable orbit. So the centripetal force is the force of, the, of, of a gravity pulling in on the planets towards the sun, and their forward momentum, their forward velocity, is, is the force that keeps them uh, in motion. And because there's, there's virtually no friction in outer space, especially at those distances from the sun, they just continue to orbit. They remain in orbit. The same thing happens with the individual moons who are orbiting their individual planets. Um, the, the centripetal force is the force of gravity of the planet pulling in on the moon, but again, that moon is in motion. Uh, around the planet, and so it also stays in a stable uh, orbit. This is a really cool experiment, and I, I know the kids will like it. This is Cycle 2, Week 5 Science, Van Cleave Experiment number 16, in and out.